Hey folks, it's your main man Ian. I'm here with Percy, okay? Percy's a Australian Shepherd that's here for training because he does something a lot of Australian Shepherds do. He barks at things and kind of goes up to them with his mouth and he uses it in his mouth in a way that can be upsetting. So uh, I wanted to talk about in this video, you know, four of the things that I think are super important to focus on if you're going to have an Australian Shepherd and you don't want to have behavioral problems because these dogs are prone to having behavioral problems. I mean, let's face it, guys, they're a ranch dog that we brought into our houses to live in the people world. And as much as that's great, that could be challenging. Good job, buddy. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is this idea of just how important it is that your dog truly knows how to be calm on command. Uh-uh. So you can see like he's in a down command right now, but he's far from relaxed. He's just sitting there waiting for more food. So it's really important that these types of dogs they understand that it is time to calm down and that most of the time you want them just calm, laying around being super chill. And they are not allowed to go from being super calm to explosive. And a lot of times what we find is the dog isn't really calm most of the time. They're kind of pacing around or they're a little bit antsy. They're pestering the owner or they're wandering around the property looking out the windows. And then, no, down. And then, the dog explodes but if we have a dog that's truly calm it's a lot more difficult for them to go from a super super calm relaxed state to explosive excited especially if they're practicing being calm like a lot so a dog like this i would suggest you master the place command and your crate and you just in general get the dog to understand i just want you to be calm around me most of the time you know unless we're doing something like playing or agility or training with an exciting reward, or we're going on a hike or something, playing ball, you kind of just should be relaxed. So when you're petting this type of dog and engaging with them, be aware of, you know, am I petting them when they're kind of excited? Am I opening the door when they're kind of excited and pushing and kind of being pest, pesty? Or are we bonding and I'm opening the door for the dog and petting the dog that's super, super calm? Okay, that's the first thing to think about is just, how important it is that these dogs understand how to be calm. Okay, and you can see he's settling now. The second thing is to give this type of dog an outlet that involves using their mouth and moving towards things to get a reward of some sort. So whether this is having a dog do all their obedience commands and give them a ball or a tug as a reward, or this is rewarding the dog with food or an excited release from a command where they get to go run around in a field, it's very important that they have an outlet that involves them going forward to get their rewards, like so. Bye. Let's go. If we take chasing off the menu for this dog and we tell him, hey, I don't really want you chasing your food, he might chase people. Sit. Break. Hop up. Yes. So when I have that marker word that means come to me for food, yes. I'm giving him an outlet to move forward to get a reward versus teaching him, hey man, I don't want you moving excitedly towards food. Hop up. Good. Break. And I can even toss food, like you see there, and give him a more exciting reward that's going to fulfill him biologically. Let's go. Hop up. Sit. Down. I can make little, uh-uh. Down. Break. Break. I can make little challenges and little tests around these rewards that teach him how to control his impulses to chase things and help him understand that there is a time to chase things and there's a time to not chase things and we can chase things together. Whether it's food or a toy, we can. Hop up, let's try that again. Down, down. Break, good. This brings me to my next point. With an Australian Shepherd, Practicing perfectly is so important. It's not enough to just go through the routine of commands throughout the day with this dog. It's so important to reflect and ask ourselves, are we truly doing this perfectly? Because oftentimes what we see is if we're not doing it perfectly, the dog becomes confused. Let's go, hop up, sit, down, good. And what we think of as disobedience is really a dog that's actually confused. And so making sure that our words associated to rewards and consequences are very clear, making sure we're using the leash appropriately or the remote collar appropriately. Good job, buddy. 
it's so important with a dog like this because it's so easy to blame them when they do something crazy and not really take a step back and go, look, it's one of the smartest breeds in the world. They should be able to understand what I'm telling them, which brings me to my fourth and final point. Australian Shepherds are a very strong, confident dog in general. Let's go. And so they do pretty good with consequences. Now, whether or not my consequence was a consequence you saw me do earlier where I gave food out and he went to get it and I said, nope, 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 you're not getting that food. You, you didn't listen to me. I didn't release you yet. Or if my consequence was something different, you know, maybe I would use the remote collar at a higher level or I might use a prong collar. Down. Good job, buddy. Let's go. It's important to realize that these types of dogs, they can handle a decent amount of corrections. They can handle a decent amount of consequences. Good job, buddy. Come on. Good job, buddy. And sometimes without providing consequences to a dog like this, you don't really know if they understand what we're asking them to do. Sometimes dogs like this, they do require a strong consequence to let them know, hey, that's not a bad idea. However, that being said, if we have applied a strong consequence to a dog like this and they're still doing the unwanted behavior, we should go back to the drawing board and understand once again, this is a very smart dog. So if we're applying consequences, hop up, and the dog appears to be confused, uh-uh, down, and is still doing the behavior, we really wanna ask ourselves, are we actually doing this properly, applying a consequence in a way that makes sense to the dog? And if not, hey, it's not really fair to blame the dog. So, no, down. So you can see Percy and I, we just had a great little training session and we're gonna go ahead and put him in his place command or in his crate right now so he can rest and relax. But remember, as always folks, we don't blame them, we train them. If we love them, we lead them. Of course, you can always subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my videos. No. Or you can go to my website, hire me for an online consultation, and even buy my poetry book there, Loving, Leading, and Losing, about dog training. It's a bunch of poems. Okay, folks, until next time, I'll see you then. Good job, Percy. Let's go.